Hello, my name is Nando Prudhomme, and I am an educational strategist specialist at Highlander Institute. This screencast will focus on how parents can help set up an ideal home environment that will promote learning during a distance learning. At Highlander Institute, we support schools and districts to improve the learning experience for students and families. This summer, we began work with the Fenton School District to help support your school's teachers during this unprecedented pandemic. Fenton's goal is to support teachers at the top of this pyramid to get high quality, relevant instruction for all students. The challenge during this COVID pandemic is that not all families are in the same place in terms of resources and ability to support students in home. We created this pyramid graphic to help teachers, families, and students navigate the most important and prioritized parts of the school process during COVID. The Fenton School District wants to support you and your child as learners, which means we must first support your safety, health, and well-being. The first consideration in our framework prioritizes these three key steps for teachers in distance learning classrooms. As a parent of a student at Fenton High School, your child's teacher will want to first establish contact with you. Then they will want to make sure you and your family are healthy. If there are any additional pieces of information about your family's health or ways in which this pandemic has affected you or your child, it's very important that you share this with your child's counselor, administrator, or teacher so the school can work with you to make your child's learning as efficient and effective as possible. We know that students struggle to learn when they do not feel safe or when they feel that their family may be struggling with health or safety. As we work our way up the pyramid toward deeper learning, the next step is establishing ongoing communication with your child's teacher. If you're not clear what mode of communication your school and teacher prefer, then it is important for you to connect with your child's administrator or teacher to clarify this. During COVID and distance learning, there will be a lot of information that your child's teacher needs to share with you, and your child's teacher will need you to keep him or her up, up to date on how best to support your child. A clear line of communication, whether it's email, text, or phone calls, should be identified first and foremost. There are many great strategies for supporting your child during distance learning, but before we jump into how we set up the home environment, please be sure to consider sharing your family's health considerations and preferred form of communication with the school as that will be key in making this year a success for your child. In this screencast, we're going to be talking about establishing routines, setting up a learning environment, establishing regular communication, ensuring all work is done, promoting exercise and physical activity, and finally taking breaks and having fun. Establishing routines is extremely important. When my daughter was out of school, I made sure that she went to bed at exactly the same time when she was in school and got up early exactly as if she was going to school. This is something easy that you can do at home. So keep that sleep schedule consistent. If there's no schedule provided by the teacher for your child, sit down with your child and create a schedule. You can do this every day or you can create a weekly schedule. Help prioritize homework, assignments, goals, deadlines. And then finally, if there's an attendance procedure, make sure that your child is marked present for the day. This is really important. Many teachers want your children to log in, sign in, and they're held accountable. So we want to make sure that your child is marked present. So your kids are home. So guess what? Your home is an ideal place to learn. If you set it up correctly, we want to make sure that they're focused, they're in a safe environment, they're quietly learning, and you can do this quite easily. Make sure that they're in a comfortable environment that has no distractions, so there's no noise, the brothers and sisters are not making noise, the TV's not on, they're away from the windows where they can look out and start daydreaming. Make sure they're occupying separate areas, like bedrooms, but make sure that they keep the doors open and you monitor that online learning. If your child likes to listen to music while they're studying, like my daughter does, I don't know how she does it, but she does, allow them to play some music, nice quiet music in the background. And of course, make sure that they have the proper materials to do the work. So that includes pencils and paper and making sure that the Wi-Fi is stable and it's not cutting in and out. That's really important for that online work. 
they're listening to music, make sure that they have headphones. If their siblings are playing video games, make sure that they're in another room or that they have their gaming headsets on so that they don't disturb your child. Make sure that you have the usernames and passwords already so that they can log in easily and trouble free. Now, at the beginning of the screencast, we talked about communication and how important it is. Well, you must establish regular communication between you and your child's teacher. You also need to help your child communicate with their teacher on a regular basis. They need to check their emails. They need to check their texts. If your teacher has office hours, you have to ensure that your child schedules that time. They should check messages daily from the teacher or from their own classmates as well, and they should respond in a timely manner. Now, if your child happens to have an IEP or requires special services, you can call your school if you need those resources for support. And remember, you're not alone. At the school, you have a team that's ready to assist. Schoolwork. Now, this is a big one. You have to make sure that all the work is done. You want to make sure that all the work that they're supposed to turn in is turned in in a timely manner. Now, you should check with your child to see if all the work is complete. Ask them questions. What were you supposed to do today? Do you need any help? Do you want me to sit down next to you? And uh, if you have any questions, maybe I can assist you. And if they did not complete the work, why didn't they complete the work? Maybe they're confused or maybe they are unclear about a specific set of directions. So now is the time for your child to call, email, or text the teacher for further clarification. Okay, it's time to exercise that body. They've been exercising those minds. Now it's time to get up and stretch. So what do you need to do? Close down the laptop screen, turn off the phones, and encourage your child to move. Get away from the desk, stretch, meditate, do yoga. You can exercise together or alone with online instructors or videos. This is a good time to basically take the family out on a walk, walk those pets, ride those bikes. Chores. That's a word that kids don't like, but there's a great moment for your child to take a break. And you know what? Chip in and help out with household obligations. So your child has been working very hard all week long. So guess what? Give them a break and have some fun. Make some time in between lessons. Give them some breaks. Give them some food. Help them make contact with their friends through video and chat and phone calls. They finish their work, they can go right ahead and get on that phone. If your child has a hobby, allow them to practice that hobby, have fun with that hobby, let off some steam, and have some fun. We hope you find these ideas and examples helpful. Check out our website to learn more about the Highlander Institute and our resources related to reopening schools and distance learning.